Thank you all and welcome. Uh, if you happen to have got one of the agendas that I printed out, there is a mistake on it, uh, kind of a big one in a way. Uh, I forgot to change the date on the top of it. It says October 14, 2014. It's supposed to say January 13. I apologize. Our agenda tonight, uh, we've done the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to do minutes approval. Then we're going to get into department budget reviews. And we're going to be reviewing the elementary schools, the middle schools, and the high schools budget. The special services budget will now be done on the 27th of January due to the illness of one of the liaisons. Uh, at this time, we're going to do the approval of minutes and of the October 14, 2014 meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Moved by Mr. Cummings. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Bobbitt. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? I just have one. Uh, Valerie Pellegrino was excused for that. The email was in my mailbox, and I found it after we got home. Any others? Seeing none, all those in favor of the minutes of October 14th, please raise your hand. That was unanimous. No, I, I was oh, I'm sorry. I was going to abstain. Okay, okay, you want to abstain? Okay, so it was one abstention. Thank you. Tonight we start our budget reviews of the different departments. And uh, in agreement with the superintendent, we picked our, which departments we're going to go when. We're going to start with the elementaries this evening. And I would ask that the folks from the elementary schools please come up to the table. I believe you do have a spokesperson for the group. Okay. If you would be so kind as to introduce yourself and those folks who are at the table. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'm Kimberly Yarlott, principal of Reeds Ferry School. Um, and to my left is Emily Carter, principal of Master Cola Elementary School. To her left is Nick Kohler, assistant principal of Reeds Ferry School. To my right, Bridie Bellamare, principal of Thornton's Ferry School. To her right, she, um, almost turn. <laughs> Julie DeLuca, assistant principal of Thornton's Ferry School. And to her right is Michelle Romaine, assistant principal of Master Cola Elementary School. Thank you. I would now like the budget committee to introduce themselves, starting with Cinda. Hello, I'm Cinda Gualyumi. I am the um, school board liaison to the budget committee. Hi, I'm David Ilg. Hi, Kevin Bobbitt. Shelley Jacoby. Hello, Bill Cummings. Welcome back. Uh, Rick Barnes. Stan Heinrich. Carol Lang. Bob Nelson. Jack Mauer. And our fabulous school district clerk, Pat Heinrich. The liaisons for the elementary schools are Carol Lang, the lead, David Ilg, Shelley Jacoby, and Chuck Mower. And Kim, what I want to ask from you is, do you want to start your presentation off first, or would you like our liaisons to give their report first? Um, and after uh, conferring, we decided that I would do the brief presentation first. Go okay. ahead. All right. Thank you. Um, the 2015-2016 proposals, budget proposals for the uh, three schools continues to reflect priorities established by the Merrimack School District logic model by maintaining progress in the areas of literacy, numeracy, technology, <coughs> and school climate. The budgets also reflect the need to be fiscally responsible and to strive for minimal budgetary implications. The three elementary school administrators work closely with one another to establish collective priorities common to all of our budgets is a slight per pupil increase in the classroom supply account. The supply account went from $19 per pupil to $21 per pupil, and this is primarily due to the cost of things like papers, it's um, general classroom supplies, um, an increase in those costs. The furniture replacement account reflects an ongoing effort to replace worn out classroom furniture, with the priority being the replacement of classroom desks and chairs. 
Each of the schools have created a five-year furniture replacement plan, which runs through 2019. The vision for this plan will continue to prioritize the replacement of worn out classroom desks and chairs, followed by uh, replacing general worn out furniture, such as bookcases and tables and coat closets. So I want to thank the budget liaisons for carefully reviewing our budgets. We had a highly productive meeting yesterday afternoon with Carol Lang, liaison leader, David Ilg, and Chuck Maurer. Shelley Jacoby was unable to attend. Um, we held our session at Thornton's Ferry School, which provided us the opportunity to view the worn out library carpet, which sits in the maintenance budget at this time for replacement. The carpet replacement will hopefully be in concert with the proposed remodeling of the library, similar to what occurred at Master Cola Elementary School and Reeds Ferry School through the support of the Merrimack Trustees Trust Fund. We were also able to see examples of furniture that needs to be replaced, and that was specific to worn out desks and chairs during that visit. Our meeting with our budget liaisons afforded us the opportunity to not only thoroughly review our budgets, but also allowed us to visit historical perspectives through the eyes of Chuck and Carol, as, they, as they've spent many years working with the committee and um, with the town. We discussed furniture and equipment replacements, as well as the vision for the expansion of preschool to include Thornton's Ferry School. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and speak to a budgetary item regarding um, a proposed additional position. This position is one of two that appears in the budget, one being the additional half-time preschool teacher, and this being a computer technician position. The three lower elementary schools each have an education technology integrator that works full time in their, our buildings. And they're certified educators, elementary educators, and are responsible for technology instruction. They work with students in classes throughout the day to teach specific skills to the students as well as work with classroom teachers to integrate technology. As we've continued adding technology, technological devices and tools to our schools, we found a dire need to have ongoing supports due to the complexities of the infrastructures. When the server or wireless hubs and technology devices are down, we find ourselves unable to complete everyday tasks. Having an additional technician available in the district who is focused on the elementary schools will allow for a quicker response to troubleshoot and repair highly technical devices as well as address infrastructure issues. And I bring this to your attention not only to advocate for the position, but to also clarify how the role of the technician differs from a technology integrator slash educator. Again, I want to thank the liaisons for their time. Our session together was thorough and informative. And at this time, I'd like to ask Carol Lang to weigh in on our budgets and the outcomes of our liaison meeting before opening it up for questions. Uh, yeah, we had a very interesting meeting over at Thornton's Ferry. Um, I want to apologize to Ms. Charlotte at my request. She sent me pictures of some examples of the furniture in need of replacement. <coughs> Unfortunately, there was some sort of a glitch and I couldn't get them to print. So You need uh, a technician. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow yours when you get it? <laughs> but anyway, we did look at some examples of that furniture and it is more or less at the end of its useful life. We saw some examples of desks where part of the tops had delaminated. Uh, some of the feet were worn at kind of odd angles, which I think would probably make the chair kind of bouncy to sit on, things like that. They were definitely at the end of their useful life. Um, Can you hear me on this other mic? Okay, so it's solved. All right, I'm trying to think. Okay. Um, 
We discussed the need uh, for the additional playground equipment, which was tied to bringing preschool to Thornton's Ferry so that it would be at all three elementary schools. It's my understanding as of right now that has been cut per the school board. I don't know when this all run, you know, what's gonna happen, but that's my understanding unless someone knows differently as of right now that that proposal has been deferred to a future year. I think it's still worth at least discussing it. Um, the premise was that by splitting preschool between all three schools, it would first of all give the kids a leg up because now they do preschool in their local neighborhood school where they will then progress as they go into elementary school. So that's, you know, an added boost for those kids to be in their home environment rather than having to transition. Um, it also is starting to get a little crowded having it only at the two schools. I did ask Ms. Yarlett and she emailed me the information as to the wait list. We obviously cannot wait list disabled students. They automatically get in. But <laughs> for non-disabled, we take them kind of as we have vacancies and there is a ratio, I believe it's, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's 60% non-disabled to 40% disabled, am I correct? I'm sorry, the goal is a 50-50 split. Oh, okay, that's different than I thought, but okay, okay, fine. But anyway, so the point is, you know, they fill with non-disabled to, you know, go along with what the state gui guidelines are, and I asked her about how many students of, from the non-disabled population were waitlisted, and she said last year about five to seven students. And typically, even if a opening opens up later in the year, by that time, the parents have made other arrangements, so usually they either get in at the beginning or they make other arrangements. Um, philosophically, I would like to see it spread between all three schools, as stated, you know, it gets the students acclimated, but there is a piece of me that feels like that may be more of a policy decision for the school board than it is a budget committee decision. I would certainly support the funding if the school board, you know, made that policy decision to spread it between all three, but I'm a little hesitant, you know, to override them on this particular issue. Um, other than that, the other thing we kind of got into, which wasn't even in the budget, we kind of got off on a sidetrack a few of you may remember quite a few years ago, um, we did some renovations at Master Cola Elementary. Um, they had a dire need for storage. The other two newer schools had bookcases and whatever, and they did not. And we added in bookcases to the elementary classrooms at Master Cola. <coughs> and apparently, at some point, there was an intention to add how to easily explain it, but if you have two racks of bookcases with countertops and lower cabinets, and then there's a lower cabinet that goes all the way across, and I guess there was an intention at some point to add shelving across above that countertop where there is no enclosed, you know, cabinet, cabinet for it. And that, I'm not totally sure if it was not done in any classrooms or if it was done in a couple of classrooms, but it wasn't done across the board anyway. And we discussed that and, you know, at that point what we were getting kind of from Ms. Carter, the principal was, you know, gee, why don't we finish off that project? It, you know, it's only a few boards across, you know, these spaces, it can't be too expensive, which I was inclined to agree with. However, today I had a conversation with Tom Tussauds and he told me that at this point his staff is stretched too thin, they couldn't take that on at this point. And so if we were to do it, it would have to be farmed out, which would then increase the cost. So unless someone else has a different opinion, I guess I'm going to hold back on pushing for that at this point in time. And my other uh, liaisons, if they have anything to add? David? Not at this point. Chuck? I appreciate um, the maintenance department's work 
here in the district. I was very impressed, actually, uh, with the tours that I did, knowing how old some of these facilities are. Um, they look very good. You can eat off of the floor. They are well taken care of. I know how hard they work. I know some of the maintenance people personally. I have difficulty, however, in believing that the tipping point on what the maintenance department can and cannot accomplish rests in a couple of shelves that probably should have been done five or six years ago and have simply fallen through a crack, crack like a lot of institutional uh, things do. A minor item, uh, in large part, um, I just have difficulty believing that we can't find it within ourselves to finish that out and make it an efficient uh, organization of space for a small amount of money. Thank you, Chuck. Um, <clears throat> before we start with questions, uh, you were all given a sheet that the school board at last night's meeting made their uh, final adjustments to the budget. Uh, I would just point out to you that uh, on the bottom you'll see a red one for $750 for office equipment. It reads ferry. They did cut that out. That was for a shredder. And apparently they're going to rotate the shredder between the schools that they currently have. And I would just like to first ask uh, Kim your reaction to this cut and how many documents, I mean, it, how big of a problem is it having to rotate a shredder around? Are you having to hold thousands and thousands of pages you got to shred up? Uh, we, we pretty much follow the retention of student files, uh, policies or regulations or recommendations. So we might be shredding um, student files, a wide variety of things. We'll have several different recycle boxes that are filled to the top. And it's more of an inconvenience to have to bring the, the big shredder in and first of all find it within the district. So it's a, a high dream, but it's not something that we can't live without at all. And it's something that um, we get around wi fine without, you know, without having to make the request. It won't be a big burden for us. Okay. The other thing on the cut list also was the uh, preschool items that amounted to uh, $97,493. And apparently the school board decided to cut most of that out, leaving in uh, $8,000 uh, in that program. Any questions from the Budget Committee? Additional questions or comments? Well, uh, about the Go shredder, on. yeah. Can you bring the paper to the shredder rather than the shredder to the paper? I'm sorry, it's easier for us to bring the shredder there so I don't have to lose a staff member to another building at that point. Um, and again, it's, it's an inconvenience, but it's not something we can't live without. So I appreciate you asking the question for clarification. Anybody else? Chuck. Um, and then I simply have uh, a reflection that I'd like to make. Um, after having met with um, the administrators uh, in our liaison's area of responsibility, I'm a longtime resident of Merrimack, uh, and I've participated in the community most of my life. Uh, I really am thoroughly impressed with the professional nature of our administrative staff their grasp of their responsibilities and the task confronting them, um, their understanding of their budget needs. I'm particularly impressed, however, with their investment in our community and our children. These are people that believe deeply in education and undertaking that 
every day to the very best of their abilities. I can't help but feel we have uh, probably uh, as fine a staff as we could ever want to hire in the town of Merrimack. Thank you, Chuck. Bill Cummings. This is Carter. Question. Um, the piano. You, I, I watched the uh, presentation to the school board and you talked about the, you know, moving the piano, the existing piano and how it goes out of tune. Mm -hmm. Does that happen a lot? I mean, it, could it happen, how many times in a year would it need to be tuned, I guess is the question. Well, if, when we have our school-wide assemblies, we um, oftentimes take it to the APR, but then also we use the gym. And when we have our winter concert, we have a packed audience. So we do have to move it up and down. And as I, I stated earlier, <coughs> uh, we have a ramp that connects our music, our library, and APR right. to the rest of the school. So I, I don't know what the grade is, but it might be 30%. And so just even going down the ramp and then back up again mm. several times. Um, the, other, the other piece, too, was to be able to take the digital piano and go outside when we have our school-wide assemblies around the flagpole. Um, so it would, it would certainly be more versatile for her and her program because she really relies on that heavily. All right, so it actually wouldn't replace the existing piano, just no, a supplementary not. piece of equipment. Correct. Okay, that's all I had. Thanks. Thank you. Carol Lang. Yeah, I'm just um, looking for some clarification from you, Stan. Maybe I misunderstood you, but I thought you said that there was $8,000 retained for that preschool, and I think the $8,000 you are looking at is actually from above for the uh, crack filling. Well, it, it, it was in the line where the uh, all the preschool stuff was cut. That okay, but it's, it's not actually reflective it's of the preschool. It's not the preschool. No, okay. it isn't. It's just was in that line if somebody looked at that real quickly they yeah. might think something else okay that's fine I just want to make sure we we're both understanding it the same thanks uh, Chuck I have a question um, you had commented about this space where the cabinet is um, in your expert opinion as a master <laughs> woodworker how much money do you think something like that would cost to fix it? Mike? As I understand um, the situation, uh, probably 300 to $350. Okay. Because that's what it's all about is the money. Yep. <coughs> Um, I guess my question is probably for Emily, but I'm not sure we were totally clear, and just so that Chuck has all the information when he's giving us a ballpark idea, do you know how many shelves per classroom and how many classrooms we're talking about? Um, no, that wasn't, it, it wasn't something that we were looking to increase. The, what, the capacity that we have now with our bookshelves in the classrooms is adequate for our purposes now. Um, and the shelves, um, I spoke with Tom Tuso this afternoon, and the, the shelves I think were put in, he said in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s, mm -hmm. and that the amount that was budgeted for all of the shelving to be com completed um, was, was done and the needs. So what was, whatever was requested to be built in all of the classrooms was completed and was budgeted for. So at the moment, we're, we are fine with our shelving. All right, so it is a depressing need at this it's point. It's not. Okay. No, it's not. Anybody else? Chuck. Um, I appreciate um, uh, that kind of sacrifice, but I still maintain that when something was intended to be done uh, and it slipped through a crack, no matter how large or small it is, uh, it seems that we have an obligation at some time to put it back on the table and give it some consideration. Uh, it seems that we have considered it, and the matter is adjudicated for the moment. Anyone else? Last chance. 
Thank you all. Well, on behalf of everyone here, I want to thank you, and I uh, appreciate Chuck's comments. They're, um, they resonate with us very deeply, and we appreciate your time and thoroughness in this process. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. And thank you, folks, for coming out in such a nice, warm evening. Next up is the Merrimack Middle School. If I could ask the middle school staff to come up, please. And if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself and your lovely associate. So, Stein, Stan, I have to ask if you were talking to me <laughs> because you were looking yes. at me. <laughs> I was looking at you. You were. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm Debbie Wolfline, principal of the middle school. <laughs> My associate is Mr. <laughs> Mr. Adam Carragher, assistant principal. Okay, and the liaisons uh, for this school are Rick Barnes is the liaison lead, Chuck Mower, and Chuck Scarter, who Chuck, yeah, Chuck Scarter, who was not with us this evening. That's right. He he has to work, I guess. He he might show up, but we're not sure. Uh, Debbie, would you like to go first, or would you like your liaisons to go first? I'm going to turn to uh, Mr. Barnes okay. and see what he'd like to do. Go ahead, I'm Rick. fine with you going first. Okay, okay, very good. And actually, I've asked Mr. Carragher to begin our presentation this evening, and then I'll follow up. The Merrimack Middle School budget proposal for 2015-16 uh, shows continued commitment to the district logic model through attention to literacy, numeracy, technology, and school climate and safety. This proposal follows a multi-year plan to replace texts, equipment, and furniture to ensure that students will learn through engaging, hands-on approaches using up-to-date materials. Funds are requested to update software and instructional, instructional materials for the family and consumer science modules to expose students to up-to-date career opportunities and practical applications of life skills. Funds are also requested to purchase eight eighth grade earth science texts to complete a second year of a two-year plan to update science texts, science texts with a copyright date of 2001. This proposal also includes the second installment of a five-year plan to replace worn-out science lab stools. In regards to a couple of other questions that were asked uh, by the school board uh, relating to the family and consumer science replacement, which is found on page 13 of the middle school budget, every student at Merrimack Middle School participates in the family and consumer science program both their seventh and eighth grade year. Is approximately 4,000 students over the last 10 years. Students complete six to eight modules during their seventh and eighth grade career. They work with partners and cover a variety of different subjects, such as personal finance, career exploration, child development, as well as cooking and sewing. Just as we did with the technology education program last year, we are requesting funding to update all aspects of this curriculum. This will provide our students with up-to-date modules that develop the knowledge and skills to be educated consumers, as mandated by the state of New Hampshire minimum standards. Mrs. Wolfline. When our liaisons came to the building, um, they were pleased that we answered questions that board members had, and so we'll continue on with those um, kinds of issues. So board members had questions about our proposed text expenditures, especially in the four content areas. Um, those are found on page 11 and 12 of your book. For the past several years, we have not asked for textbook replacement funding in those four core content areas, English language arts, mathematics, social studies. Last year, we did ask for some science texts, which I'll speak about in a minute, um, but those were new texts. They were not replacements. 
because our enrollments had been steadily decreasing over the past number of years, we had a good stock of extra textbooks that we could pull from when books became too worn for students to use, and that supply is now depleted. <clears throat> for next year, we are asking for a total of $3,400 to purchase replacement hardcover books in each of the three content areas that I mentioned earlier. These texts are in constant use by our students, and they're anywhere from 5 to 12 years old. The funds that we have requested for English language arts, mathematics, and social studies are for replacement books, the same editions that our students are currently using, not new texts. The curricula in these subject areas are not presently undergoing revision, and so what we plan to do is to purchase some high quality, very good texts that are used from some vendors that we really trust, and those are about half the price of if we had bought brand new copies of those older books. In the case of science, however, you will see on page 12 that we are requesting, as Mr. Carragher mentioned, new texts for our eighth grade earth science classes, and those will replace outdated ones that were published in 2001. I did bring a couple of the books to show you. They are modular books. You can see they're pretty thin. We were able to choose the exact modules that we wanted for seventh grade this year and for eighth grade next year if our budget proposal is approved. Um, the teachers are currently using the seventh grade books and they're very pleased with them because the children get not only an addition that they can use in their classroom, but they also have access to an online textbook at home, which brings many really helpful study aids, such as um, videos that they can watch, assessments, study guides. Another nice feature of these books is that teachers can use them for students at all different reading levels. They have the ability to print out a chapter that looks much like the chapter that some other students are using at a higher level of reading for those students that need some reading support. So the teachers are really finding the seventh grade text to work very, very well. Additionally, there are many pieces of what we call informational text that the students are learning how to read at a higher level so that they'll be prepared when they're tested on the smarter balanced assessments. One of the board members asked if this particular new text line item for science would go back to zero as it had been previous to these two years of funding requests. And, and yes, that is true. However, Mr. Carragher and I would anticipate we would ask for a few hundred dollars worth of replacement text so that if students were to be added to the population or if we had students who needed to have textbooks at home for various reasons, we would be able to accommodate that. Another account that we had some questions about was our testing and scoring account, and this is found on page one of our budget proposal. This account had actually gone down to $2,000 in recent years, although it had been much higher some years back when we were required to purchase some testing for state mandates. So currently it's been around $2,000. We brought it up to $4,000 for the current year, and we are requesting that same amount for the 2015-16 year as well. The minimum standards for public school approval that were adopted last spring require that each school use diagnostic tools so that they can adjust instruction in response to personalized needs of students. And we are really to monitor the progress of the students as well as figure out how well we are doing with our curriculum to meet those needs. So previous to this year, we had delayed purchasing items because we wanted to make sure we had testing materials that would work well with our students. We've been collaborating with the upper elementary in elementary schools and we've identified materials that are consistent with the ones they've been using and have found effective and we're very happy that those items are now available at the middle school level. They were not before so this is a good time this current year for us to begin expending those funds and use those materials with our students. And so we'd be pleased now if our liaisons had any comments to make or any questions for us and then of course we'd like to take questions from anyone on the budget committee. Rick, um, excellent job summing everything up. We did look through the books. Uh, you, were, you had samples of the books that you were looking to replace and, and purchase. And um, as, as you already pointed out, the, uh, the science books that you're looking to replace are from 2001, so they're several years old. Um, we took a nice tour of the building. Uh, we took a look at the stools, some of the older stools, and then some of the newer style stools that they're looking to replace them with. 
a uh, little bit better designed. Uh, we took a look at the technology lab and then the, uh, what was the other, the family and consumer lab and uh, went over the, uh, the changes the, uh, that would be represented on page 13. Um, overall, the, the budget seems pretty straightforward. The textbooks and then the uh, the stools I think are the only real th um, things that jump out at it, and, and the, you know the books are, are very uh, needed I would say. <laughs> so and then uh, Chuck, if you wanted to address that other uh, position that you were discussing as well, uh, I think it's a very good characterization of the meeting that we had, Rick. Um, a modest proposal relative to textbooks and so forth, really. Um, when I was um, uh, talking to the elementary administrators, I, I asked anecdotally what kind of time was spent administratively dealing with mental health issues. And I was a little bit surprised to see that we're spending as much time as we are um, because it's an indication that a, a lot of these problems are showing themselves earlier and earlier in our student population. Um, I noticed uh, in the budget information that I received uh, that we have a, a district-wide um, position that apparently has not been funded uh, for mental health and I just wondered um, if you could give us some characterization of what is manifest at the middle school level in terms of administrative uh, time and effort dealing with um, children's services, court issues, um, any number of uh, mental health organizations and um, so forth. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mower. Um, so at our liaison meeting, Mr. Mower asked the question, was there anything that you had proposed that was not actually funded? And we did say there was one thing that we've been talking about and that would be um, a mental health professional that would be housed at the middle school, but what we've been discussing is it would be someone that would be available district-wide. <clears throat> At the middle school, we are very fortunate to benefit from the um, safe and drug-free grant that brings us Detective Prentice, our school resource officer, and many other resources. We mentioned to Mr. Barnes and Mr. Mower how invaluable that assistance is, but we also said it is very true that each day we are dealing with issues of children who have all kinds of problems. Um, there is quite an increase in children who have anxiety, we very frequently have to deal with children who are talking about hurting themselves, and it does take up a good amount of time. We are fortunate to have resources we can tap, but we, what our dream would be is that at some point we could add such a mental health professional that would be right there in the district, readily accessible. What we frequently must do is to ask parents to take their children to a primary care physician, to an emergency room, and all of that does take a good amount of time. Neither Mr. Carragher nor I are licensed professionals, and so we do have to rely on people from the outside. Um, it is something we have been gathering data on. How much time is spent? How many referrals? Is it increasing? One of the wonderful things about the Safe and Drug-Free Grant is that it requires us to do all kinds of surveys and to gather data. And we are indeed really looking at that and hopeful that at some point it's something we can add. Um, Mr. Carragher and I agreed that probably the percentage of those issues that I myself deal with um, is about 15 to 20 percent of my time has to do with those kinds of issues. Whereas Mr. Carragher most frequently deals with disciplinary things, behavioral issues, if there is an issue that um, has to do with a child's safety and well-being, that's usually something where I'll step in. So um, Mr. Mower, does that give some of the information that you were hopeful I might Discuss. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask a question of the principal. Uh, on the original cut list by the superintendent, um, 
sidewalk repairs could cut out to the tune of $55,000. I would just like, and I realize it's under the maintenance budget, but it's the school that you oversee. And I would just like a little, <coughs> while you're here, a little information as to what that was supposed to do and what's going to take place now that that's not in the budget. It's not an urgent need. It is something that has been happening over the course of the past couple of years now that the building is 10 years old and there's some erosion that comes with um, some of the, the salt and the sand and the weather. And so what's happening, if you come and visit our building, you'll see there's some crumbling around the edges of the, some of the sidewalks. Um, we believe we can get through another year with that. It's not something, as I said, that's a safety issue or, or urgent in that sense. But there are some repairs that will be need to will need to be made at some point. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the middle school? <coughs> Carol Lang. Yeah, two different subjects. Um, one on the textbooks. Um, if I understood you correctly, what you're anticipating those. Science text that you're talking about classroom sets as opposed to each student having their own text and so so those except for the rare exception where there might be an IEP or something but in general those class those texts are per classroom not per student yes that's right they are the kinds of materials that are used right in class and with the online materials that are available if there's homework the students can go online to do homework but we're also aware that not every child has access to that, and so teachers are able to print out materials for those children if they need them. Okay, because what I, where I was going was obviously a child with an IEP would get an at-home text, but if there was a student who didn't have an IEP, but for some reason wanted, needed a text that theoretically on a case-by-case -case basis that could be provided. Yes, that's right. Children also have what's called a 504 plan, and sometimes it's a matter of um, a back injury, not able to carry a big load of books home. Okay. Yes. Then going back to what Chuck was discussing about the psychologist, and I'd like kind of your professional input. I know as a parent what I saw, but that was quite a few years ago, and that was that a lot of these emotional issues, you see the beginnings of them in elementary. They definitely become more prevalent and more disruptive as you hit teenage years, middle school years, and then probably even more so at the high school. And I realize you're not a mental health professional, but would it be your opinion that if we could address these issues at an earlier age, say elementary or middle school, we might actually save down the road as far as the impact as the students age into the high school? I do believe that's true. That is something the research shows. Um, the other thing we do is to give what's called the um, Youth Risk Behavior Survey at the high school level every year mm -hmm. as part of Merrimack Safeguard. And one pattern we're noticing is that children talk about perhaps hurting themselves, the anxiety at the middle school and younger. And then um, sometimes those children get to the high school and end up with some issues with substance abuse. That's the, the data that we're tracking. Okay. So for now, it's on the back burner in my mind, but maybe when we have the superintendent up here later, I sort of let her input too as to why this position wasn't funded and you know how high a priority should it be. But I wanted, while we have you at the table, to get your take on it. Thank you. Sure. The only other comment I want to make is, again, we've just been um, given another five years of this grant funding, and we are hopeful that there'll be some ways through those contacts that we can find some, some help for these issues. Any other questions? Chuck Mower. Um, uh, relative to the sidewalk repair issues at the uh, middle school, um, district-wide, we have some healthy work ahead of us relative to sidewalk construction, uh, particularly through the Safe Routes to School partnership that we have with the community and the regional planning center. And when we defer maintenance on sidewalks at the middle school, we are deferring 
an investment that will then be competing with additional work that is recognized to be needed and accomplished uh, uh, down the road. So I, I would rather have some consideration to nibbling away at something as opposed to having it um, accumulate in a way that is more difficult for us um, to accommodate it. It's just I, a reflection. I imagine, Chuck, that uh, when we do the maintenance budget in two weeks, uh, this subject will also come up because it is under the maintenance budget that that was in. Anybody else? Going once. Good night. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. And now we'd like to invite the high school. And Ken, if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself and your two very nimble associates. Thank you, Ken Johnson, principal of Merrimack High School these past 13 years. And I turn to my right, I have senior assistant, Rich Zampieri. And to my left, the second senior assistant, Peter Bergeron. Good evening. And the liaisons for this were Bill Cummings as the lead, John Hanson, Carol Lang, <coughs> and Cindy Gualiumi. Ken, do you want to go first, or would you like your liaisons to go first? I think I'll say a couple things first, and then uh, after okay. that, you have time to Bill. Go um, right ahead. Obviously, last Wednesday, we had the opportunity to present our budget to the school board. And then uh, shortly thereafter, in fact, uh, that following Thursday, we were able to meet with the liaison team. And since then, a couple of changes have been made. Uh, but for the sake of uh, everyone here and for the sake of the audience, I'll go over my budget statement briefly and then uh, yield to Bill. <coughs> so the proposed budget for 2015-16 reflects a balance between maintaining and reducing some budget lines in favor of increasing other budget lines to support the purchase of new texts and additional equipment in several departments which will add to and enhance our programs. In addition, some athletic equipment needs to be replaced to ensure safety and compliance for both practice and competition. Regarding new texts, the business department seeks additional sets of marketing texts for its sports and events management class to meet increased enrollment in these classes. The social studies department requests advanced placement or AP American government and politics texts as well as sociology texts to support proposed new curricula. In addition, the world language department requests advanced placement Spanish texts, five French five texts, right, make that French five texts, and first year French readers to replace outdated titles. Regarding uh, additional equipment, the athletic department actually requires padding for the high vault pit. The guidance department requests laptop computers to use in the delivery of the freshman, sophomore, junior, and series programs, and there will be other benefits to the students as well. Regarding furniture replacement, a cafeteria table, student chairs and combination chairs and desks are requested in support of the first installment of a five-year plan. In addition, lab stools are requested to support an ongoing plan to replace old worn out lab stools for the science department classrooms. Regarding the replacement of athletic equipment, and we know there's been some adjustments in the past uh, 48 hours, the athletic director seeks football helmets, shoulder pads, a pair of field hockey goals, one batting cage and batting net. A softball net is also requested to maintain a safe and competition-ready equipment. 
We've also had the chance to answer about 30 other questions uh, that the board had in advance uh, last Wednesday, but had a great session with the liaison team led by Bill Cummings. And so, Bill, I yield to you. Thank you, Ken. Yes, I had uh, on our team was uh, John and Carol and Cinda. Unfortunately, wasn't able to make it, but uh, we had a very productive uh, hour and a half or so. Um, here are some of the highlights. I'll let Carol talk to you about um, an item on page three regarding tech ed. So, Carol, you'll be queued up for that when I'm done. Um, the computer ed repairs on page four. Uh, repairs account uh, shows an amount of uh, $50 per computer <coughs> for 413 computers no longer under warranty. Uh, pages seven and nine um, outline the athletic transportation and co-curricular transportation based on a three-year average. And you can just jump in if I make a mistake at all, please. Um, page 11, the New Hampshire, everybody's wondering what's in it. NHIAA, right? Well, some of you might know, but I didn't. Interst New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association requires increased supervision of away games by administration. Administrators travel separately. They do not travel with the teams and travel together when possible. There's also some increased expenses relative to groceries, and I guess there's a new computer baby in the school? Yes. Uh, one that is uh, competency and standards based. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, let's see, and then the music supplies, <coughs> sheet music apparently becoming more expensive due to copyrights. Um, social science has new, requesting new text. Uh, sociology course has been uh, reintroduced that's been brought in by a new department chair is that right that's correct he's had a, a new vision and a comprehensive plan uh, behind it and we haven't had sociology for more than a decade now and it's certainly time and then there's some uh, iPads rec uh, requested for the phys ed uh, health additional equipment line item on page 20 um, these I understand have uh, quite a number of applications, including body mass index, cardio fitness, playing videos, helping kids really get more engaged with, with their uh, activities. And the videos would also show proper technique. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, a camera for the end zone was, uh, was kind of an interesting discussion. It's, uh, it's in there. It's, it's not broken out, but it does cost $4,400 for the end zone camera. So we'll will I'm sure have a question or two about that I I find it interesting that um, as to why it's used um, in terms of gathering data for the coaches and that kind of thing I just mm -hmm. thought it was you know maybe to stream it to somebody's house or something like that but um, and then the padding is requirement by again by NHAA for the for the uh, pole vault um, and then the guidance office is looking to uh, replace uh, their uh, replace with laptops their current workstations, desktop computers, and allowing the counselors to be more interactively involved, for example, to demonstrate how the Navian's college and career readiness resource works, be more portable in that, in that way. And in, on page 23, you'll hear details about the existing goalposts, which are rusting and peeling badly. I mean, who gives a thought to goalposts, but we have to now, apparently, along with a number of other items that need to be replaced, which includes a wireless headset that is a replacement. And I'll turn to Carol, because she actually went to see the piece of equipment in, in question regarding the tech ed department. Carol, and then John. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yes, Mr. Johnson was kind enough to take me down to look in the woodworking area um, they have a system that spreads throughout the entire area with duct work that then sucks up the dust that's created when you're doing woodworking and apparently uh, present and past practice has been for staff to change the filters do other you know routine maintenance on this equipment and mr. Johnson actually clarified something for me because I was under the impression that what they were looking to do 
was to take all of that maintenance and send it to an outside vendor to do. But if I understood correctly, the real thing is they will still do the minor routine maintenance, but what they're looking for is to have specialists who come in periodically in order to catch you know, more involved things that staff themselves might not catch. Would that be a correct assessment? That's correct. Okay. So that was kind of the deal on that. So it was interesting to see it. There was like duct work, you know, all over the ceiling going to each piece of equipment and then a little vacuum that sits there and sets up the dust. And I have to say, and I was there at a time when, you know, no one was in there doing any woodworking. And even despite this system, you could definitely sp smell wood dust in the air. So I imagine that dust gets pretty intense, you know, when the room is actually in use. Uh, so it, it definitely needs to be maintained properly was my point. Uh, a couple of other things I just wanted to touch on. It was more or less just the way it was presented in the budget book, but in case anybody else questioned it, when I first was looking at the uh, furniture replacement line on page 21, I first saw it and it was to purchase two cafeteria tables for $6,576, and I about choked because <laughs> I thought that's the dollar amount for the cafeteria tables, but Mr. Johnson explained that that's just two of the larger items, but that it's multiple furniture items within that, so I felt much better hearing about that. And I was also hoping, I haven't watched the entire school board meeting from last night, but I did watch part of it, and I saw them struggling over the end zone camera because they really didn't have anybody there to answer some of their questions. So I'm hoping maybe we could use this opportunity to clarify it a little more, I guess. And Cinda, please feel free to add in from your perspective, but I think what they were struggling with was currently we have a lift and somebody gets up on the lift and uh, with a camera and takes pictures and this end zone camera instead was going to be some sort of, I don't know if it's an automated device, and what they were kind of struggling with is it's still going up on a lift, is it gonna be on a pole? Can you enlighten us any more than what they had available? And then if Cinda wants to chime in, that would be great too. You wanna talk? So this year we didn't use a uh, lift. In the past we have used a lift. The booster club would cover the cost of the lift. It would be nice to have the end zone camera because it gives an enhanced view. Uh, you can run all your offensive plays and defensive plays and special teams play. It goes to a system and it breaks it down. You can film certainly a football game from the press box. That's the way it's been done for many years. Uh, but having the end zone camera just gives it a more enhanced, uh, enhanced view. But this year we did not use uh, a lift. We had uh, a parent, two parents, that would film it from the, uh, the press box and also on the field as well. Is this an automated camera system that you're talking about? Yes, it is, Mr. Heinrich. And there's what, one in both end zones? No, just one end zone. Just one end zone, okay. Oh, most certainly, I was gonna see if Cinder <coughs> wanted to chime in, because it is on, it looks like it was cut out last night, so. Um, yes, it was cut last night, the 4,400. 4, um, was cut and there was discussion um, about whether the lift was used or not um, and so you know ultimately I can't remember the actual totals of um, that particular vote but the school board did vote in favor of removing it at least from this year's budget some of the comments were that you know maybe this is an appropriate tool for a booster club type of a fundraising activity or um, that was a comment that came up from the from the floor so to speak Yeah, I mostly just wanted to clear up that bit about whether this camera was going up on a lift or was it stationary or what was it. So it, it sounds like it would be just a stationary camera, but at this point it has been cut by the school board. So. All right, thank you. Um, Cinda, I would ask, um, as long as we're on these things for the athletic field, could you talk to us about the rationale behind the cut for the 80 $6,400 for the goalposts. Right, there was some discussion on that as well before that was cut, at least for this year. Um, it's obviously something that does have to be done. Um, it, it 
came down to, um, first of all, the school board wants to ensure that it's inspected um, because there was basically, um, that would just be a requirement. There's someone that we have on staff that can ensure the engineering or the, we just wanted to make it's sure. It's not rusted through or something ex like that. Exactly, yeah, we wanted to have it um, inspected by an engineer to hold out. Um, I think one of the points that I know at least um, persuaded me to wait versus now is the fact that the track is on the capital improvement plan. Um, so to basically replace those now and then have to rip them up or work around them when the track is put in um, was a deciding factor for my vote um, as it relates to that. If I can get the assurance, if I could have gotten the assurances that the um, that there's a safe, that it's safe, they're not rusted through completely, and, and so on. But that was removed from the budget as well. And I guess they asked the high school administration about the goalpost? Well, uh, when uh, our painter informed our athletic director that the goalposts were weak and he was questioning their integrity, uh, over the course of the year, we noticed that the the paint was flaking and the rust was coming through. Um, and ultimately, Eric uh, chose to, to place the goalposts into the 2015-16 budget. I fully understand the compromise uh, because um, Eric was uh, so passionate about it, concerned about its safety. It seems that we've come to a place where, at the very least, uh, we're going to have an independent uh, person come out and look at the goalposts uh, to see if they are still uh, intact and if they can make it another year. And if not, uh, maybe plan B. So. Any other questions from the Budget Committee? Carol Lang. Yeah, still on the subject of the goalposts, um, twofold thing. One, for the most part, I would agree with everything Cinda said. The only thing that gave me pause that came up in our conversation was when Mr. Johnson said that the athletes use the goalposts when they're doing their stretching, you know, pre-game stretching or pre-practice stretching, whatever. And if they are in, you know, serious you know, decay, is that a safe environment? And then what further just got me thinking about it was when Mr. Johnson said, well, okay, it looks like we're going to have them evaluated. Well, if we have them evaluated and they're found to be not safe, now they're not in the budget. So <clears throat> I realize there's usually a little room to juggle money between accounts, but do we really want to be in that position? Cinda. Um, it was confirmed last night that there is enough money in the, there's an emergency fund um, that would cover that in that situation. I think that was the plan B. That makes me feel a little more confident. Thank you. Kevin. Just to follow up on that, so that emergency fund would be uh, strictly for emergencies. It's not moving money from other sporting teams or that sort of thing? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Chuck Mower. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick. I didn't, I didn't see you on the periphery. Go ahead, Rick. <coughs> Sorry, um, the first question, I, a couple of questions here. The first question I had was in the 8300 uh, section of the budget, the uh, driver's ed, which that's offset by the tuition charge, but I noticed in the expenditure for 13-14 uh, was 9,200, but the, the budget's only 6,500. So is that inadequate enough amount for that line item? or? should it be increased based on how much is actually being expended over the past years? Well, those are numbers that are supplied to us by uh, the central office. Uh, Matt would be the best person to answer that question. Here he comes. Uh, Pete's so good, he's got the page ready for me right away. Um, we're in a period of decline in, declining enrollment and um, the summer driver program has been on that slide also. So we thought it prudent uh, to level fund that. Um, it's revenue neutral to us. Uh, if we overexpended that, it would, uh, it would make us go over our appropriation if everything else was spent to the maximum, but 
I wouldn't expect that. So just uh, to follow the trend, we just chose to keep it level funded as was the uh, driver red in the regular year, although that looks like it's uh, more reasonable given the difference between the expended in 1314 and what we proposed in 1516. So it's just a judgment call as far as to okay. keep it level, level funded. The next question I had was on the, uh, the computer education and fair. Uh, it was a 20,650. It's on uh, page four here in the budget. And it says it's for uh, 413 computers, which comes out to be $50 a computer. So what I'm wondering with this is, uh, I just wanted to l hear a little bit more of the um, reasoning for this, because based on that amount, it, it for the number of computers, if they, they're getting to the end of their life cycle, would it make more sense to slowly start replacing them with newer computers or just using the old ones for parts to keep the newer, the older ones going? So I, I just wanted to get more of a, a feedback of the, you know, the, the concept behind this line. Yeah, we've been using that formula uh, probably ever since I've been principal. Uh, and obviously what's happened in the past year is that more computers have fallen out of warranty. But we've also been working very closely with Nancy Rose, who I'm sure has presented before this body a very comprehensive plan to see that all the technology needs of the students at the high school can be met. And ultimately that's part of the plan. Okay. So uh, roughly how old are the computers right now? We just had a little uh, conference here, and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, they're probably around seven or eight years old, and um, if they have uh, slots in there in the bay for additional memory, we'll just put some more RAM in there, see if we can uh, uh, update the OS uh, for and see how it runs, station. the operating <laughs> system. They vary, and we did receive some of them from yeah. the middle school recently. We right? did receive some from, from the middle school, so they were in a state of flux as far as that goes, because we did a replacement from the middle school. And then there's always our good friends at uh, BAA Systems, uh, right down the street at 413 uh, Daniel Webster Highway in Merrimack, who has been very kind to us in as far as donations go. So we can uh, expect <coughs> Um, you know, su a surprise here and there along the way. Okay. So, and some of those computers, they're refurbished, they're nice, they come in, and we, we want, may want to take those and may upgrade those with some additional RAM to just give them that little extra boost that'll carry them for a couple of years till the computer replacement cycle comes around and hits the uh, high school, which I believe Nancy Rose will talk to you about that. So. I have one last question. The, uh, and I, I think it's uh, the uh, 8600 on page 13, um, where you had mentioned the uh, computerized baby doll. Is this uh, increase one doll, or are we talking multiple dolls? Because I, I saw they didn't have one at the, um, the middle school, and they said the high school already has a couple. So uh, she, yeah, we, the, she did bring that doll for the uh, school board presentation, but we have a couple dolls. So how much, how much exactly is the one that, the, this new one that? Yeah, th three thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. All right. That was all the questions I had. Thank you. Thank you. Chuck. Uh, Ken, could you please speak to um, uh, the needs of uh, family and consumer sciences that uh, apparently have been deferred for the moment? I can speak to it, but I know that Pete Bergeron would be far more eager to speak to that as he oversees that Well, department. you know, it's always nice to go right to the top, Ken, and uh, hear, it, hear it from the horse's mouth. I'm more than it? happy to speak to it. Uh, but we can break it down to you in terms of the amount of cost for food or for... Uh, 
the doll, et cetera, if you'd like that. Do you mind if I yield to Pete on this one? Well, actually, I was uh, more concerned about, uh, rather than the, the everyday necessities of uh, family and consumer sciences, uh, the cabinets and countertop uh, oh, okay. replacements that have been uh, apparently deferred for the moment. I'm very curious about what the condition is uh, of the present facility. Uh, and that would include uh, some mention of uh, the appliances and so forth. They're an integral part of the cabinet and countertop system. Okay. So earlier in the evening, Mr. Moore, you mentioned, I believe, the maintenance department, how you could eat off the, uh, the floor. And I would tell you that the maintenance department, they've continued uh, in that fashion in keeping up the, uh, the cabinets in the countertops. Though over time, you know, they start to wear, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, it can go beyond next year and maybe beyond, you know, the following year, but that's something we, we've started in discussion with our new family consumer science teacher. And it'd be nice eventually to, to get new cabinets, the new, the new countertops. Uh, you know, we have a gentleman on the maintenance department that whenever the stoves or the dryers you know, break down, he goes in immediately and, and he, uh, he takes care of them. So, uh, he, you know, he does a very good job. But, you know, presently they're, they are in very good shape. When they were purchased, they were top quality uh, cabinets. And, uh, you know, once again, the maintenance department year after year, you know, takes care of them. And the family consumer science teachers make sure they're, you know, when they go over safety with their students that they you know, make sure that, you know, they, they take care of them and, you know, they don't, uh, you know, they, they treat them uh, hopefully uh, in a way that, you know, they're going to have that long-lasting uh, life. Thank you, Mr. Bergeron. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions or comments for the high school staff? Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, and thank you again to the Liaison Committee. Thank you. At this point in time, um, I would like to ask if the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, and the business manager have any words of wisdom they want to say to the Budget Committee on their first night of budget reviews. I think it probably is um, a good thing for us to share with you what did happen with the board last night and um, Matt has prepared a sheet that really shows you the process that we went through um, and he can walk you through this. The, the school board asked <coughs> us to come forward with a series of cuts. Um, we did that together as a leadership team of 19. We put it in tiers. Um, going from those things that we felt we could give up first all the way back to tier five which was the tier that we wanted to preserve and so the board operated off of this list which was exceedingly helpful and Matt can go through in more specificity in addition to the list um, some board members went into our budget book too and so that is so reflected on the second page but I think this gives you a good indication of the process that we went through. And literally, we just finished it last night, so we wanted you to have it uh, tonight because it is the most recent rendering. So would it be helpful for you for us to just walk through the tiers a bit? Would that be helpful? By all yeah? means. All right. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just give you a brief overview of the, the concept behind the colors and everything. Um, it was a long night. Uh, there was a lot of discussion. Obviously, you can see on these two pages there are a lot of items that are uh, that were discussed. Um, basically, the color coding: if it's red, it is out of the budget. If it's green, it was discussed and it was left in the budget. So we felt that instead of just giving you a cut list of what was cut from the budget, which 
totals up to $843,000. Um, it would be helpful for you to know what the board discussed also, and those are those light green shaded items. Uh, you can see, as the superintendent stated, um, they've tiered approach as far as priorities and, and less uh, um, hurt for the, uh, the district as far as, uh, you know, our operations go. Um, you'll ask Tom about the, uh, the HVA system, which we call the, the heat wheel, and he'll give you some insight on that, that it can be put off. But, you know, these were the first sections that we thought we could uh, take from the budget and, and not impact services. Um, you can see, just for example, you know, there's a green item there. It's a, an online parent registration system, and it's actually a piece of software that plugs into PowerSchool. So if any of you have a PowerSchool account, if you have kids at the middle school or kids at the high school and you have a PowerSchool account, we also want to start a drive to get every parent in this school district to get a power school account starting from kindergarten on in so you'll have that and once you have a power school account you'll be able to use this online parent registration system and this system allows you to go in as a parent and put all your demographic information in put your telephone numbers in uh, put your email addresses in. That's really important. We want to start collecting your emails because, you know, the days of everything going in the backpack and then Friday comes and you just dig in the bottom of it and those wrinkled, crinkled papers come out. I remember those days and my daughter's 24 now. And um, it would be much more streamlined if we could email you announcements, if we could email you parent newsletters, if we could email you mm, report cards or something like that. Um, this will allow that. This will also allow you to pick um, which phone numbers you would like us to call in case of emergencies. If it's a snow day or something like that, you can have your list of phone numbers and say, I want you to call my home phone because chances are I'm going to be home, you know, and not ring the cell phone so you don't have to jump from one to the other or anything like that. Like I'm sure it's kind of annoying, but it's the way we do things now. Um, it'll allow you uh, choices to... Uh, you know, receive certain documents or not receive certain documents. Uh, it gives you it gives you choice, and when you have, let's say, um, three or four children and they go to three different schools, you don't have to fill out the same piece of paperwork. I see a smile over there, and that warms my heart a little bit and uh, fill out the same piece of paperwork each and every single time you go on as a parent and you fill it out, you put all your information in there, including your email, and it's done. And so this was something that we felt that was important, so it was left in. So those are, those, those are kind of the, the green items. You can see the furniture replacement plan that we had started uh, Gosh, five years, five, now. five years. Now we're into another cycle of five years was still left in the budget, and a few items were taken out. On page two, there's lots of items that were looked at and discussed, and these items were looked at and discussed. And um, you see at the bottom, uh, we have a, a computer technician, our computer educators right now um, are overtasked. They're not put in a position of doing technology integration. They are being put in a position of fixing uh, things that are broken, things that need attention, things that a computer technician can do for half the salary of a computer teacher with a master's degree and lots of skills that are not being imparted to the staff as far as integration goes because they're busy with menial tasks. So that was the, uh, the emphasis behind that, and that is something that uh, I have been waiting for for a, a very long time. 
and you just keep going down and you see that the goal posts were taken out, the end zone camera was taken out. Those are items we didn't have on our list. Those are items the school board discussed and decided to take out. And then at the very bottom, you see the, the negatives, which are really add backs. Uh, they added money to co-curricular transportation to kind of get some parity with uh, athletic transportation and um, put some more money into maintenance of the track for the high school uh, so we can keep that operational for another year. So that's, uh, we tried to make it as easy to understand as possible, but it's a lot of numbers and it's a lot of columns and, uh, you know, look it over. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, give them through Mr. Heinrich, your chairman, and we'd be glad to, to answer anything on this page or anything on any other pages. So that's all I have to say. Do you have any other um, general questions about this? Because you are going to see people that are going to be able to talk specifically, but we certainly can give a go. Do you have anything else? I personally today? don't at this time. Anybody else have any quick questions they would like to ask of the superintendent or the business manager? Kevin Bobbitt. Uh, not a question, but I, I just want to make sure you turn your mic on. Is that on? Can you hear me? Yes. All right. I just appreciate the format. It's, uh, it's helpful, so appreciate the time that went into okay. that. Good. Thank you. Cinda. Um, to further on the format um, comment, um, I was also very appreciative, and I had mentioned it last night as well, that this really helped us. This was a great tool, and it took a lot of work um, for the administration to go back, and um, the idea of putting in the tiers was really helpful, um, I believe, to the school board. And then just one other comment. Um, when you were discussing the, um, the software, the online parent registration system software. One thing that came up in our discussions last week was that it almost pays for itself because otherwise we're paying administrative staff at the schools to input all this information. It also um, gets that information accessible much more quickly. <coughs> so if something, uh, so from a safety standpoint, that was another uh, reason why um, the school board left it in. Yeah, and also if I can add, I didn't add this at the, uh, the meeting, but as far as um, printing and copying, uh, this will probably take your breath away, but it is average for a, a district our size, I am told throughout the industry, the school industry, we make around 18 million copies a year, and uh, that adds up. It's quite, yeah, I, I felt that way too, Mr. Hansen. But it that's is- That's a lot of paper down That's a lot of paper, six, isn't so it? we're hoping this is gonna you know, it's not going to cut it in half, but it, if it cuts it in a quarter or something like that, I'd be very happy with it. Any other questions? Thank you. We now move to public participation. Is there anybody out there that would like to come and speak to the Budget Committee? Seeing none. We will move on to other. Um, it is with great regret that I announced to you I received a letter from Valerie Pellegrino and that for health reasons she has to resign from the school district budget committee. And I would like some of you please make a motion to accept or not accept her resignation. Moved by Carol, do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Cummings. Uh, my personal comments here. I've uh, known Valerie uh, since I first started in the Budget Committee in 1987. She's been on and off for a while. Uh, very hard worker and uh, I'm very sad um, to see that her health issues have overtaken her ability to come and participate at these meetings. Uh, I did, in the background, try and figure out something that might work for her, but in the end, it wasn't going to work. So we need to vote on it. 
And all those in favor of accepting the resignation from the Budget Committee of Valerie Pellegrino, please raise your hand. Any in opposition? It was unanimous. Valerie, we accept your resignation with very, very deep regret. And uh, anytime you can come back to this committee and want to serve, please do. And thank you for your service. Um, in regard to that, uh, that leaves a position open. And because of our schedule and where we've started this process and um, a lot of other logistical nightmares, I would suggest that we just leave the position open and then it'll come up at the next election to be filled. I don't feel that trying to fill it at this time would be prudent because by the time we and because of the time frame involved, uh, I believe we'd have to advertise again for anybody. I realize there was a person who was interested, but there could be other people that would be interested. And by the time they would get on here, we'd be all done. So unless there's any major objections, I am asking for consensus to leave the position opened until the next election when it will come up for election. Yes, Rick. I, I agree with you at this point in the process. It would probably be best uh, leaving it open. The question I have, uh, it's more for the two or three people watching at home, how many years left are on her uh, term if anybody is interested? None, so it's... it's I know, but what if they go to run to replace her, Okay, so it would be yeah. a full three years. So it would be a full three year term. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, because of the resignation, we have two openings for liaison assignments one for the upper elementary and one for library media services. And as opposed to me trying to assign it, I was hoping to look for volunteers. And which one would you like to do? Uh, I'll do the upper elementary. Okay. Uh, you'll be working with Rick Barnes. Uh, can I get somebody to take library and media services? I'd like to do that. John Hansen. You'll be working with Chuck Scotter and Bill Cummings. Thank you very much. Appreciate your volunteering so quickly. Makes my job a lot easier. Okay. Bear with me a minute. Our next meeting is Tuesday, January 27th at 7 o'clock in this beautiful cafeteria, which is so nice and toasty warm. Uh, we'll be reviewing district-wide, upper elementary school, library and media services, maintenance, and also special services, which was postponed from tonight. If if you have any questions or problems, please let me know. I will try to assist you in whatever way I can. And is there any other item that anybody needs to discuss or question this evening? Yes, Carol. Oh, sorry, oh well, you had you you, you moved your oh. finger, so oh, you know, it's okay. like you you were bidding on something. Yeah, I was going to say, did I just buy something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just bought the Bassmaster. <laughs> okay. Um, seeing that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, and good night, everybody.
Shannon K. O'Hara. Kevin James O'Toole. Alexander S. Olson. Christopher M. Ortiz.